So depending on how much propane you're transferring, you might end up needing quite a bit of warm water. And I'm going to be using, you don't, definitely don't want to boiling. You don't want to be doing any sort of thermal shocking or anything like that. And uh, you don't want to sink too much heat into your receiving tank. Uh, if you already know that your tank's pretty much low, I wouldn't even bother checking it until you've filled it up to a level where you think you're roughly uh, at that 80% level. Uh, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to check this tank, which I know probably has uh, less than quarter left in it right now. So I'll just start gently pouring this over and not getting too crazy. And we'll just run my hand down it until I start feeling where the cold is at. And as I go, and as I start to realize that there's definitely nothing up here, you'll see this steel right here will retain the heat for quite a while actually. And then you'll feel down here uh, where it's cold and then you'll start to focus in on that area. And there will be a very distinct barrier here kind of let the temperature equalize, equalize a little bit and you'll see that that area you'll feel that area where the uh, where the propane level is and uh, like I said you don't want to transfer too much heat into this receptacle so I'm going to save this and this is going to be the same process I use up in my delivery tank as well So this is my hose adapter here, and this was given to me by a friend. I'm not entirely sure how he built this. It looks like just a generic hose here, store bought, uh, that's been adapted, that's been uh, fitted up to these basic fittings. It doesn't look like there's anything custom built here, so it pretty much looks like all these items could be uh, purchased right off the shelf. I've seen a bunch of different variations of these hoses, things with bleeders in them, different fittings on them for different uses. Uh, this one works fine for me. I'm not too concerned about being able to bleed the hose. This bleeder valve here, you're going to see the same uh, bleeder valves in the uh, small propane tanks, in uh, in these medium-sized propane tanks like this one here. And uh, I just recently had this one filled at the local supplier. So we're going to hook everything up here. And I've got my valve here closed. Now you'll see inside here, this is basically a check valve. And some of these check valves, especially on these older tanks, uh, are a bit stiffer than others. So in this tank, I'm actually not gonna have too much problem with the delivery tank just feeding itself without having to pour too much hot water on it. Uh, but on the other side, it won't break that valve at all until you pour the hot water on the tank, or the warm water on the tank. So I'm gonna fit this up here. And this will not, there are different fittings that have some sort of dowel inside here that will overcome that. So you don't need, actually need any of that pressure at all. That might be a better option for you. Uh, seeing as I have this one and I've got a, a routine that works for me, I'm just going to keep going with this route. But you don't have to worry about this. As soon as you screw this on and as soon as you take it off, as long as there's no pressure from your delivery tank, that valve isn't going to release that propane back off at you. It is going to spit quite a bit out the hose, so that's one thing to take uh, caution of. I'd be wearing some gloves. You're going to get quite a bit of, you're going to waste quite a bit of propane throughout through this hose here. And because there's no banjo fittings, I'm actually not hooking this up to the propane tank till I get it in place. Uh, because there's no, sorry, no uh, swivel or anything like that on these. I do, in fact, have some hooks on the side of this tank, but just for making this video, I'm going to set it up on here. I don't know if it necessarily needs to be elevated. Probably doesn't really, but uh, every little bit helps, I guess. And one of the things I haven't seen too many people mention is the reason you actually have reverse threads is so that you can't fasten typical pipe threads up to these tanks and be feeding flammable liquids into otherwise would be unsuspecting to have that propane in it. Okay, now this should start feeding on its own because that tank is fairly empty, but it in fact is not. So that's going to make this video a little bit easier for me to make. It has not overcome that check valve in that tank yet. So 
which is somewhat surprising to me. There we go. Now this is going to take a while for me to get some of this propane drain into this tank. So I'm going to cut ahead to that. And once we start to get this tank down a little bit, I'm going to start pouring some more hot water on it to get more to flow. And then I'll show you that part of the process. So I've just shut my stove off and I'm back to drain the rest of the propane out of the bottom of this tank. It's getting pretty low now. Once that pressure does overcome that check valve, it for the most part will stay open with a fairly small amount of pressure and it'll drain either fast or slow uh, depending on a bunch of different you know circumstances like the you know the ambient temperature how much heat you've sunk into uh, your delivery tank possibly the elevation uh, once you put a little bit of heat into this tank you don't really have to just keep feeding it the hot water you can just jiggle the tank back and forth and that propane will splash up into the warmer parts of the tank which is what I've been doing for uh, the last we'll say 10-15 minutes or so it's actually been flowing fairly quickly into the uh, receptacle tank because it's so low I'm gonna have to repeat this process probably two or three more times yet because this is a rather large tank I have uh, some larger bottles that I'm gonna be feeding into this as well but since we're getting to pretty much to the end of this tank I'm gonna start pouring some more hot water over it which will help feed the propane not only feed the propane but it'll allow me to tell how much I got left in my delivery tank as well Yeah, it seems like I've got very little left in this. Now, you, you may not be able to drain all of the propane out of it. When I first started doing this process, uh, the tank had probably a third left in it, and I wasn't really able to get all of it out of it at that time, but uh, we'll see it being as how empty it is now. Maybe I'll be able to get pretty much all of it. And again, this works great for checking the level of your delivery tank and for just feeding that propane out faster. I wouldn't get too crazy with the hot water. You know, we don't want to get on the dangerous side. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of other videos out there explaining this stuff. And we got to find a lot of uh, reliable information from just general people. The guy at my service department, at my uh, bulk propane delivery uh, supplier, was uh, was pretty helpful actually. Not everybody is going to be so helpful. It really just depends on the people. I would go to the service department rather than the sales department though. That should be just pretty much obvious. One of the myths, uh, a couple of the myths actually we'll try to dispel here is cooling the receptacle tank. He, the guy at the service department said that is for the most part a myth. I have seen other videos where it did appear to be effective uh, just for the sake of uh, you know efficiency uh, I'll try to do this on a cold day when my receptacle tank is as cool as possible but I'm not gonna really go through all the trouble of pouring cold water over it warm water over the delivery tank works perfectly fine but like I said shaking the tank is a great method as well it gets pretty aggressive oh sounds like Sounds like probably getting pretty low because that check valve is starting to close now. Now I'm not going to sit here all day for the last 10%. So uh, the other myth I'll just uh, talk about is, well, maybe, I don't know if it's less of a myth, but Somebody told me that bulk propane is significantly cheaper, like for household use. It is slightly cheaper, but it's not because there's a road tax on propane. Uh, it's more or less just because you're buying it in bulk. So it was like 20% cheaper than buying from wherever you would fill your uh, barbecue propane tanks up. I wanna throw a couple extra things in here. I'm gonna test to see if cooling the receptacle tank does in, in fact help transfer fluid over. I've got a new bigger bottle here 
And I usually work from my smaller bottles to my larger bottles because I feel like, uh, I guess we'll just say it right now, I have actually been having some luck fully evacuating my smaller bottles. Uh, the, two pre the two previous bottles, bottles to this uh, were completely emptied, uh, which emptied out the line for me as well. I was going to test to see if, uh, if a good way to evacuate the line would be just be pouring some hot water over it. Um, if you're not able to fully evacuate your bottle, uh, after you close the valve, you could pour some warm water over this line itself if you don't have a bleeder on it. And that should evacuate the rest of the propane into the tank, clearing it so you're not spraying uh, liquid propane all over your hands when you do uncouple that valve. But uh, we'll find that out at the end of this. Right now, I'm just gonna see if cooling this tank will help pop that check valve because I've poured hot water on my delivery tank, warm water, a full jug, and I haven't been able to bypass that valve yet. Now it's been a couple hours since I've put the previous two bottles in it, and uh, we're later in the afternoon, and this receptacle tank probably has heated up since then, which is why I say I, like to, pr I prefer to do this in the morning when it's cooler. But I have had, seen people have luck cooling the receptacle tank down. Now this water coming out of this line is extremely cold right now. This is uh, April in Canada. And I can vouch for this water being extremely cold because I haven't had a water heater for several years now. So I bathe in this water and it is extremely cold. You get uh, you know, a frozen headache within seconds of being under this water. But as of yet, it doesn't seem to help this valve yet. Yeah, so this tank is, is getting pretty cold to the touch. But it really doesn't seem to be helping this. There we are. It's finally bypassed the uh, the valve. Could the cold water have helped? It's possible. The other thing I wanted to see is how much if it would be a problem having the uh, the delivery tank lower than the spout on the receptacle. It doesn't seem to really matter much. So we'll let this fully empty and let's see if we can drain this entire tank and do it as well. Even after putting this tank in here, I don't think, I don't know if I'll be much over half full yet. This is a pretty large tank, but we'll have a check. We'll see, we'll use this to see the level, check the level on the tank and, and see if we can fully evacuate this one or not and see how full this tank actually is. So this tank is taking quite a bit longer to discharge into my receptacle, uh, which makes sense because it's quite a bit larger tank. Uh, it took quite a bit more warm water, but it could just be because we're later in the day now. Uh, so I'll use this time to dispel another myth. And uh, I haven't poured the hot water over this tank yet to check its level, but there's actually a more uh, professional way of checking the level of your tank when filling it, and that's actually your breather valve. Now the breather valve serves two functions. Uh, it's a relief valve in case this tank gets overfilled. You don't want to fill these tanks over 80% full. And that's why you'll find the breather about four fifths up the way, up the side of the tank. Now you can see I cracked the bleeder open. I'm not getting liquid propane on my hands, so it's at least lower than that bleeder valve. Now, one of the things you'll hear some people uh, in the comments uh, say in some of these other propane videos is, oh my God, I was waiting for the tank to explode. Tank's not gonna explode. Uh, the other reason this bleeder valve is here is actually a relief valve. If this tank does get overpressurized, it'll just pop that valve and evacuate itself down to a safe level. Now, if you overfill this 
tank, it may or may not pop that bleeder valve. If the tank is cool enough, it probably won't even pop that valve. You're not at risk of exploding the tank from pressure. If you have too much gas in here, it won't be air, it will be gasified propane. Uh, that can't explode your tank. If you increase the pressure, if you increase the amount of liquid propane in here, condensing that gasified propane, all that's going to do is liquefy that propane. There is no scenario where you overfill this thing unless you're in some sort of extreme condition where there's, uh, you know, you're in a burning building and uh, it's still going to evacuate out of that tank. And the, unless there's air in here, unless you've somehow managed to force oxygen in here, there's no way that there's going to be an explosion inside of this tank. So it's not something you have to worry about. The reason it's dangerous to overfill this past four-fifths of the way full, past that 80% mark, is because it could pop that bleeder valve and you could wind up discharging gasified or liquefied propane into the environment where there is a nearby heat source that could ignite that evacuated propane. Now that's not going to burn back into the tank because as I said, there's no, there should be no oxygen inside the tank. You need oxygen and fuel to burn. So, but you will have a really nasty fire outside of your tank. So that's, uh, that's another myth I want to just kind of dispel there. We're getting pretty close in this tank. I'm going to get some more warm water and we're going to see if we can fully evacuate this tank lower than the intake port on this tank. Okay, so I apologize. I got somebody mowing their lawn right next to me. So we're going to try to wrap this video up. I've pretty much evacuated this entire tank. You can hear it start to hiss now. So that would be a good indicator. One of the ways you can check to see if you're getting down is by tilting it to the side a little bit and see if you can get that hissing noise. And that'll tell you how close you are. Still no liquid propane. And let's say you're down near the bottom. You just wanna shut this down. Uh, but you haven't fully evacuated yet. You can just tilt it over to the side or possibly even flip it upside down. I didn't even think about that. You could just flip it back right side up uh, while it's still evacuating. Maybe pour a little bit more hot water on it. That'll clear your line out for you. So we're actually going to do that. Hear the air going through it. The measure give her a little bit more warm. Close that valve. No liquid propane. So the last thing I'll mention at the end of this video is uh, fill in smaller tanks, little one pounders. It's more or less the same procedure. If you want to put your one pounder in a container of icy cold water, it probably does help. Uh, you know, you want to elevate your delivery tank on a bench or something, it probably does help. You're going to want to be doing this outside. Shouldn't be really doing this at all, to be perfectly honest with you. This is for uh, educational purposes only, but uh, the small tanks are pretty much the same. But with the small tanks, I do believe you're gonna wanna take more of an advantage of the breather valve. The breather valve didn't really seem to help me much at all for filling this tank. Pretty unnecessary for this procedure, but uh, for the smaller tanks, it might be a little faster, a little bit easier to go that route. You can hear the box on this popping now that uh, afternoon sun's coming out things are starting to expand so i think that's about enough for me for today i hope this was helpful i'll leave some links in the description you can check out some of the vi videos that i used for education to learn how to do this myself uh, there's some great there's tons of videos out there if you're trying to fill smaller propane bottles you're going to find millions of videos it's really pretty simple uh, you know there's no point in me beating it to death wow so about four small bottles took me from under quarter to about half a tank these things are huge 